What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode on a lovely day with Savvy Wabby One. I'm sitting beside the beautiful KOC. How are you doing? Absolutely awful. <laughs> Do I am share with so, everybody. So just the opposite of wellness. This is all bars, no barbell, all bar. I was in Vegas and I slept maximum three hours every night. I got my steps in, that's for sure. Um, didn't eat a vegetable, didn't drink water, um, but it was a grand old time. And so if I'm, you're going to get some loopy answers from me today and just know I'm not liable for anything I say on this podcast because I'm delusional. <laughs> I love it. What was, what was your favorite memory from Vegas? Like fill us in more than just, I went okay. to Vegas and I got drunk. Well, Thursday we roll up. I'm with my three girlfriends and they were acting crazy. I was like the whole time. I'm like, are they mad at me? Like I even looked over at one point and saw them texting, like just two of them were texting each other. And I'm like, and it was, so it was me. I'm like, what? say it to my face. Like, you know what I mean? And so I'm kind of like, huh? And then I kept saying things. They're like, oh yeah, it's fine. I'm like, what, what's going on? And then we get into, we were waiting for our bags and Amy starts going towards the bag and then she bolts away. And I'm like, oh, what did you see? She's like, uh, nothing. I'm like, what did you see? I was like, did you see? Cause there's these annoying people in the plane. She's like, no, 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 it's fine. We go in there, and even in the alcohol, I think they were acting so weird, like the not duty free. I'm like, what is going on? Like my friends are genuinely mad at me. I'm like freaking out. And then we start walking towards the baggage claim. And my other friend, Alexis, booked a last minute uh, flight the night before and surprised us. So the reason Amy was being crazy is she saw Alexis and like, cause she, they were planning it to surprise me and Lexi. So that was a fun little thing. Um, so I that was Thursday. That. Checked out Delilah. Awesome. Super cool place in the wind. And then we went to a pool party. Unfortunately, um, Medusa was going to play and he just no showed. I think he just canceled last minute, but we had a good time. Pool party. And then pool party to nightclub. Saw Mao P, which is phenomenal. 10 out of 10 recommend if you get a chance to see. Um, trying to think of anything crazy. I just danced and danced and danced. Uh, there's, I'm like trying to, I should probably think of something more fun. Actually, fun fact, this is going to be my confession session, but I'm going to tie it in right here. Guess what kept getting confiscated from me multiple times. What? Every eye Electrolytes. Drops. No, eye drops. Oh. My eye drops. I was like, I have a medical condition. I have dry eyes. Like, no. And so they would just like take it on my purse and throw it in the trash. I'm like, what, what, you know what I mean? Like what a thing to get compensated at the bar. Not what did they think it was? Drugs? That, I'm assuming people like make molly water and put it in eye drops or something. What is yeah, molly I'm, water? You drink I'm it? Not gonna talk, I'm not going to talk about that on the podcast. You, if you know, you know. If you don't, you know. Huh? It's just, it just people, that's Gotta actually a common TikTok thing. For that. People put drugs in their water bottles. So I'm like, I'm assuming it's just like a concentrated. So then they could do a little meal of drugs. <laughs> I'm assuming. Oh, fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I think that's mm-hmm. a probably a common so it it makes sense but I, I i literally was like no i have my contact lenses like i'm genuinely have dry eyes <laughs> um but that kept getting compensated and then the next day we were absolutely just on one and then we went to the new live just opened up you know live miami yeah the 24-hour strip club yeah. yeah so one opened in vegas but it's not a strip club there it's just like a really nice really nice place so we went there so i'm dom dollar great time. I kept getting in trouble because I kept getting on to the booth on top of the booth <laughs> and standing on this like nice. the wooden part. And then the Bowser kept coming over and he's like, you know, you can't stand there. I'm like, I'm sorry. They told me I could. <laughs> I just played dumb. <laughs> and then I waited for him to leave. And so he kept coming back. He's like, how many times? I'm like, I'm sorry. I got my dancing feet on and I just, I can't control where I end up. Uh, but it was a good time. Dom Dalla was amazing. My friends didn't know, half knew who he was, half didn't. And I'm like, just trust, trust the process. And it was, it was a great time. And then three hours of sleep, lived off pretzel sandwiches and we bought a cake and it just sat there the entire time. So normalize buying a table cake in your hotel room for someone's birthday and just have a bunch of forks and knives. So like every few seconds, you just see a bite, <laughs> just lived off cake. It was great. And yeah, that was, wow. that was Vegas. I quick summary. It sounds amazing. It was great. And I don't know who any of those people are. I didn't think you would. A lot of very deep 2 a.m. 
beeps and bops, a lot of womp, 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 which it just, it's, it's mm-hmm. where I go for therapy, where I go for therapy, Vegas, tier 3 a.m. Absolutely. Womps. And you went on a meditation different. retreat. I did. I came back whole and inspired <laughs> from Vegas. Yeah. Question. Have yes. you ever been to the live strip club in Miami? I have. I went in September. What is that like? It, I'm so curious. Are there just strippers everywhere or is that just one section? No. No. So how it works is it's quite like a classic Vegas looking club. Like you walk in, there's one section and it's kind of walled off and then you go up the stairs and then there's the big dance floor and the stage. And then, you know, the upper levels that look down on it. And in the middle is like uh, a big dance, like strip pole and dancers are on there and they're typically they have like performers that come on that are unbelievable. And you can tell they're just like professional dancers who are like fine with being scantily clad. So they come on like every hour but and the times in between, yeah, just strippers out there and it's just their dad, but they're all amazing dancers. But yeah, and then they'll, they'll, they'll take their shirts off and whatnot. And then people throw money. And then it's like kind of like constantly ebbing and flowing through the show and whatnot. And then every once in a while you walk around and you'll have drinks and you notice a lot of really pretty women and not very much clothes <laughs> and uh you could just like probably pay some money and get a lap dance or whatever it is i don't know i didn't experience that but yeah just a lot of you're like i feel like i'm three years old like i look like just this like innocent little child compared to these beautiful just tall they're all in like heels and bra and underwear and yeah they're, they're, they're just like you don't really notice it till you notice it yeah no i was yeah. curious because for the listeners that don't know, this mm-hmm. club is one open 24 hours, which has to be wild. Like when is their downtime, right? True. Is there a buffet at some point? And then two, right? Two, it's a club, but then it's also a hybrid with a strip club. So, I mean, we lived in Miami, never went, you know me, not a big clubber person. Um, but I was always like, what is this thing like? And one time I had this friend that was like her boyfriend went or whatever. And she was like, oh yeah. And like, he went to some club named Liv. And Michael and I were like dying laughing. And she was like, what? And then we were like, nothing. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't just, worry about it. Yeah. I mean, she did know it was a strip club, but we were just yeah. laughing. I can't remember what it was, but we were like, do you not know what Liv is? And she was like, no. Cause there's so many clubs in Miami to go to. So many, um, so many. I went to one one time. It was like Mr. Something. Does that sound familiar? It's like labeled oh. Mr. Blank. We went there. It, is it, it's not Mr. Wolf. Why am I blanking? Once again, mind is empty. But I know exactly what you're talking about, and I'm pretty sure I've been there. It's yeah. Amazing. We like we went, and Tell it me. was really fun. It was like I definitely drank a lot because I don't like being at club sober, and I made, therefore, made my friend Riley drink with me. And we were probably the only ones really drinking. It was so funny. But uh, it was a good time. I'm like, I'm looking, Mr. Mr. Jones? She's determined. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jones. Jones. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And we had gotten a table and you had to spend a certain amount. And so, like, at one point, Michael and Tom are, like, on – that you could choose, like uh, – you go out on like a spaceship or you could choose what, what yep. vehicle you want and you float above the club. And so I have this video of Michael and Tom in this tiny little spaceship just floating above the club. And I, I don't remember, maybe they had like Amazing. poppers or something. <laughs> I don't it's know. Wild. It's so weird. I'm just like, God, like, we did one world. and done. And we were like, Hey, we went to a Miami club. We went all out. You got, you got to experience it. You got to experience it at least you once. You got to experience it. So should they? Well, okay. It. I'm so glad you had a great time. I am not happy for your hangover, <clears throat> but I'm proud you let loose because you don't do it often. Thank you. Um, Make it count. Yeah. Full circle on your cake. That brings mm-hmm. me to one of my hot takes, and mm-hmm. that is the Netflix show Is It Cake is hands down one of the best TV shows I've ever seen. So it's called Is It Cake. You look so confused, and I'm annoyed. I'm trying you don't to remember it. I think I know what it is, but keep talking. I'm trying to. There's three seasons for suckers like me. And it's hilarious. So basically these bakers compete for money and you have to recreate an item. And it's sometimes themed. 
um, like last night was like, uh, you know, like kind of spooky Halloween, like these scary heads of werewolves, vampires. And like, you have to create a cake and replicate this object. And then you are up against a bunch of these judges and they're like always famous judges, like Oscar from the office. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to think a lot of them are like B listers. He was probably like the most A list. I was like, cool. That's cool. Oscar is there, but the rest are like a lot of people I've never heard of. Um, Mm -hmm. but they'll judge these cakes and it's essentially like one will be cake and the rest are fake. And they're just like, you know, a sculpture or whatever. And then they have 20 seconds to guess if it's cake or not. And it's just so amazing to watch these bakers like create it to a T and like it, then they kind of dim the lights. So you have to determine which one's cake and it's so much fun. That's like a game. do Do you ever see people like that? You're like, how are you so talented? I'm like. I yeah. only have a skill like that. Wow. I can't even make a cake, I, let oh. alone carve it into like this intricate werewolf or like someone did a dartboard. Like you guys, if you want stupid TV, I like TV that makes me like escape. That is a show you need to watch. That's what I need today. I need some wholesomeness to make up for everything I can't say on the podcast. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. You don't want any D or, or you can do Gilmore girls too. That's pretty wholesome as well. But I am in that like era of Rory where I hate her right now. She's being mean to her mama. So it's not that wholesome. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. So that was that your hot take? Don't bring eye drops into the club. Yeah. Eye drops and gum. Number one, most thrown away thing. And I was just like this and I get it, but I was just like, wow. This, this, Why gum? How yeah, do you also replicate that? Because gums, they just, you know, you put a little pop Absorb. one gum out, put, wrap it up. Do you know what I mean? Because it's either throw out the whole gum or manually unwrap each gum, the bouncers. So they just oh. say, toss it. It's just funny. I do find it interesting as someone who's been to many of festivals and nightclubs. It's just like every few years, there's the new it item that people are using to smuggle stuff in. And right now it's eye drops and, and gum. gum. And I'm like, that's what the kids are doing these days. Eye drops. <laughs> do you know what? Do you remember this is like back we were, oh my God, like 18, 19. I would yeah. go to Watershed, that like country festival. Yeah. And people had tampon applicators. Like it looked like a tampon. Yeah. But it was really alcohol or like a pad liner. And then underneath it was like this tiny flask. Yeah. I never did it, but I thought it was brilliant. It's genius. The amount of times I sn- like I'd wear cowboy boots and just a little flask in the boot. Like there's just so many. Smart. I can tell, yeah. It's easy just to save money these days. We're in a recession. Get a Absolutely. flask cowboy boot. Why do you think I wear cowboy boots? Just kidding. That's not the reason, but it's an <laughs> Real option. Reason. Yeah. You see Kelsey out and about. She's in some cowgirl boots. You know, she's you packing just, heat. Just come and say, Kelsey, you mind sharing? I'm like, I got you. I got you. Exactly. Um, okay, cool. Well, I like that hot take. Um, I have another hot take. Please tell. And that's very exciting. So I was watching The Bachelor with my friend Courtney, and they're like, you know, nominate the Golden Bachelor for the girls and guys that have been watching The Bachelor. This girl Kelsey won, and spoiler alert, but you should know by now. Uh, and her dad was so hot. And like, I think everybody was like, oh my God, your dad is so hot. And sadly, her mom had passed away like maybe a couple of years ago. So it was like prime candidate for bachelor or golden bachelor. Yeah, that's exactly and, where my mind went. Yeah, they're like, we might be seeing you. I don't remember his name. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to recommend my mom. So, because my mom's single. Yeah. She's <gasps> cute, right? Do She's it. Stunning. Do it. I would so, love that. She'd be perfect. And she loves The Bachelor. So yeah. I'm on the phone with her. I recommend her that day. I'm on the phone with her. And I tell her, hey, just so you know, I nominated you. I think you have to fill out this application. She was like, oh, is that why I'm filling out this application? I got an email. I'm like, were you not going to tell me that you randomly got this application and you just also decided to apply for The Bachelor when I nominated you? <laughs> I was like, is your mom yeah. just haphazardly responding to applications? Like, Did she not realize where it was from? I'm like, mom scams scams i know <laughs> I, i'm yeah, worried but, for our parents every day i think about it i'm like oh some nigerian prince is gonna message and say they won a million dollars <laughs> and absolutely fall for it there's like michael always gets these scammers will come after his instagram which he doesn't even use social media 
Yeah. Like that's what's so crazy. He never oh. posts and he deletes it off of his phone to be more pr- productive. And he logs in on his phone to like, like my stuff yeah. and like support it. But like these scammers, he used to own a, a program where he would teach people how to build these businesses with PR firms. And so I think maybe that's like, he would run ads with it and that's how they got his face mm. and they would just replicate his profile. And like, Oh my God, the amount of people oh. that would message me being like, your husband's messaging me. I'm like, No, obviously I'm not following this account, but it looked like identical. It's just like, come on guys, use your brain. Like I'm not following it. Obviously it's not real, but it happened so often. And his dad texted him being like, Hey, I can't figure out how to get the WhatsApp number. And he was like, what? And he's like, yeah, for the investment that you talked about on Instagram to me. And oh my God, he calls his dad and he's like, dad, that is a fake account. I would never ask you for money. Oh, and he no, he never did anything. Like, thank God, yeah, thank whatever God. didn't happen. Yeah. But I was like, your own father got duped by like some weird ass scammer. Crazy. Go stay safe out yeah. there. Watch after your parents. Anyone over the age of 40, I'm worried for. So look after them. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Should we get into our headlines today? Yes, please. Okay. We thought we'd just do a little, you know, chit chat. Sit down, talk about what's been going on lately, in and out of the gym, in our pop culture era. Um, first things first, what's on everybody's lips is Beyonce went country. Have you listened to the new album? See, I was really pumped. I went and downloaded the whole thing, and then I got absolutely shit-faced 30 seconds later and forgot it. But it's on there. I'm currently working my way through it, but I don't have full review on it, but I'm okay. working my way through. And so far... I have a lot of thoughts. And so far I'm just like loving just the concept of the era as well. Like just the revenge story of it, her three part trying different genres. Like I'm just obsessed. How about you? Yeah. I, I really like that she added guests Mm -hmm. that are like a bit unique to country. Like I know Post Malone wants to dip his toes in it and I love Post Malone. And like, he's coming out with this song with Morgan Wallen. I've heard 30 seconds. I'm already obsessed. I love both of them. So like, right. So she, I love their song, Levi Jeans. I just just on repeat, like that duo, I didn't know I needed, um, or Miley Cyrus's album Mm -hmm. or not album. Sorry. Her track feature. Yeah. Yeah. You what she nailed. So one of the biggest reasons for her even doing this was like, she felt very snubbed by the CMAs like many years ago she performed with the Dixie Chicks and she just was like not welcome there. And so this is very much like, okay, country, you don't want to welcome me. Well, I'm just going to take over the genre. Very like Beyonce, especially like she's a Houston gal. And like, there's so much like coming out about like black country singers way back in the day, teaching white people and just the, where it all originated from. And like her just really bringing awareness to that, which I find like so cool. And at first I was kind of like, okay, Where's like, why, aside from Dolly Parton and uh, Willie Nelson, was that the other one? Like, but she didn't go with any like mainstream current country singers. And I was like, but she Mm -hmm. nailed it with like avoiding it, but country, like Miley is country adjacent and like post Malone, I'm totally, I'm like, oh, he's in his country era. So I don't know something about like, I was like, those are the two most perfect country features that aren't fully country. And then very like, oh, we can just do it on our own move aside. And I still, I love country music, but it was just, I thought like perfect feature. And like to go with Dolly Parton, I'm like, Oh, it's just, it was so perfect. Like, of course. And like the rendition of Jolene, like the new ass song, Jolene. Yep. And just how it's like more, it's not like, so like she's coming for her kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's like Beyonce power to it. So I like, and actually fun fact, there's a bunch of I don't know exactly how this is working, but just because she's brought awareness, she has a lot of like smaller acts that she brought on featured. And so a bunch of like smaller independent, like black country singers are getting more listens just because Beyonce is in that. Just like, so Spotify is picking it up and they're growing. So a bunch of these like independent ones are just like remaking. So I'm like, Beyonce comes, it's like Taylor Swift coming to city and boosting the economy. Beyonce comes in, she's like, boom, streams for everyone. I'm like, I just, I love to see it. Yeah, that's awesome. There was, I was telling Michael about how Post Malone is coming out with, a, you know, song with Beyonce, Martin Mullen, Taylor Swift. Like he dips his toes in everything and everybody. He went on Call Her Daddy. He was so fucking funny best. on that episode. I love him so much. I love him so I much. Know. 
And Michael was like, you really like get joy out of this man. And I was like, I do. There's something about his like energy that I just want to give him a hug. And I think he, nobody has ever really seen a picture of my brother. Post Malone is my brother. Look wise. Uh, Minus the tattoos. My brother doesn't have any tattoos. He has piercings. But like, he looks just like Post Malone. And like, he'll go as like Post Malone for Halloween because people will tell him that. And so it's like this big teddy bear with like, you know, facial mustache for a long time. He had long hair. And like, he was like, he looks really hard on the exterior, but he's a like big softy. And so I've mm-hmm. always just compared him to Post Malone. And I think that's why I just like always love that he's like doing that and like just being so open and like, mm-hmm. like he just seems like he's down for anything and just makes me want to give him a hug. Like he's my brother. I love that. I love that. We all wish Post Malone was our brother. I was like, would be the coolest brother. Absolutely. So. I bet he like doesn't love that analogy, you know. Your your brother or Post Malone? I bet Post Malone doesn't love the analogy oh, that we all want him brother. to be our brother. I mean, he's he's <laughs> wiped up. He's good. You know what I mean? We we all be there. So I think he's okay. He's okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Next up, Kelsey. Have you seen the documentary Quiet on Set? I have a confession. I've not, I've consumed every YouTube video about it, every podcast, but for whatever reason, I think it's because I'm watching Succession. I go to watch my nightly, I'm like, it's going to be so depressing. I really don't want to watch it. So I listen to like podcasts about it while I'm going. So I have not fully watched it, but I'm the closest person to watching it who hasn't watched it. First of all, it's just like, eh, eh, eh. Like it just is so, and especially it makes so much sense. I think we're in such that age of seeing the child, the people that we watch growing up becoming adults and some did not make it out alive. Do you know what I mean? Some turned out totally fine. Like uh, like Josh Peck is actually like an example of someone who like turned out really good, as good and minus the drugs. He actually did not, actually he didn't even turn out okay. He had to go through it. Yeah, but now he's okay. But you know what I mean? He had to just go through a minor drug problem to get out okay like you know what i mean they're all i guess you could say ariana but ariana's got dating issues she only goes after taken men like do you know what i mean and then ariana was, kelty Aria, i know i always that's the canadian in me that's the canadian <laughs> sorry <laughs> but it's you know what i mean it's like I mean, calling it's taylor a, swift tyler swift <laughs> i know i know make fun of my accent okay okay but the accent yeah it's just how i pronounce a's so i don't know i'm making okay. excuses um, but yeah, it's just, ugh. and just knowing like, it, it's hard for me to even watch. It's just like so creepy to know that's like when kids in Hollywood back in the day, like didn't have a parental figure that was really on top of it. And that seems to be what it is. It's like the people who had really good parents, like Keenan's, I think was very much like that, like good parents on top of it. They knew they couldn't, but it was just the vulnerable kids who were breadwinners for their family i'm like oh oh yeah i agree you? i also <clears throat> i have not seen it either yet i'm waiting i have this list of things i want to watch michael's me gone for a week so you yeah. bet i'm like going to really soak in those nights of like watching yeah. girl tv and i was like i don't he would not want to watch this he hates anything that's like dark or sad so um I'm saving to watch it, but I have also seen everything on TikTok. And it's so crazy, like everything that's coming out. Even I just saw something on TikTok of Drake Bell's girlfriend at the time and who it actually was. I didn't know who she was. Her name was like Fifi, Um, but she was like this famous singer, I think, as well. And it was never confirmed at the time they were dating. But then like she came out with this album um, that was like all about what had happened to him, like a song that alluded to like, man meets boy and it's like about how she helps Mm. drake bell and like drake bell said met the girlfriend at the time you know her mom's the one that helped me you know recognize everything um but yeah i think it's wild that they're coming after josh peck like people just want to place blame so often where you're like they're mad at josh peck for not reacting to it where it's like that's kind of the wrong guy to be mad at and did you see the um the the like TikToks of like the smoothie man from iCarly interviewing Dan Schneider. Oh no, I haven't seen. That. Oh, the smoothie. Yes, yes, yes. The guy who like takes his side and try to let Dan Schneider like 
redeem himself. Explain You're himself. About that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I watched this, like, and it's, like, it. so cringy because he's, like, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. It's probably bad. And I'm, like, okay. It's, like, the domino has fallen. Like, you have a lot more than just that one domino to admit. Yeah. But um, it is crazy. It definitely makes you think because, like, us growing up in that era, like, I don't know how old our listeners are, but, like, those were, like, our – we idolize those people. Like I think mm-hmm. of Amanda Bynes to this day. She's one of my favorite like actresses. I like I've, t- I've talked about how I based like half my personality on her when I was a kid because yeah. I would always consume her content and she's like totally not come out on the right side. Like it's really sad to see. Yeah. And we don't know why, but there's a lot of speculation with it on mm-hmm. TikTok of like, you know, she talked a lot on her Twitter. I remember when she was coming out on Twitter years ago. Yeah, I remember she was going, like, lack of better terms, crazy. But she was just going off about stuff. And we're like, oh, psychotic break. But you you know what I mean? Now, looking back, you're like, oh, this just opens up so much. It, And for me, it's always such a reminder that like you said, we looked up to these people so much. And I wished I was them. I wished so much I was on a TV show. I was a singer. Like, I was like, oh, that's everything I'd possibly want to be. And it's just one of those, like, Not that if you're successful, it means like that's happening necessarily, but like we don't realize what people are actually going through. Once you see the full picture, it's like, oh, would you actually want their life? Like not saying if a kid wants to be a singer, they have to deal with that kind of stuff because obviously a lot don't. It's just like you never know what someone's dealing with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it'll be interesting also to see if anything comes out on Disney. Yeah. That's kind of like – yeah, nothing has, so it almost makes you wonder. I'm like, hmm. Well, there has. There's that oh. girl. She was in Even Stevens, Ren. I think it was her name, Ren. And she has an entire podcast exposing Disney because mm. she had a horrible time. And she was like the sister on Even Stevens. And she had – I did listen to one episode of The Mother of Sweet Life, Zach and Cody. Yeah. And how, like, they would body shame Zach because he was heavier. Yeah. Than Cody, um, so there's like little things that come out, yeah, which I think are just like one the time, like that time back say, then, people yeah. were not that sensitive, and yeah, I, other than that, I don't know, but it'll be interesting if anything did come out. Yeah, it's a catch twenty two because it's one of those. It's like part of me is like, you know what, Disney is such an old company; it has so many things in place versus Nickelodeon that I feel they would have all the like proper HR beforehand, but at the same yeah. time. Disney has so much money. They have these little things called NDAs and pay people off. So like, will we ever know? Like we don't, that's always, that hurts my mind when I think of like who in Hollywood's been paid off. Not to go like full conspiracy, but, but people definitely have in something or another. So I'm like, but what? Yeah, exactly. What have they been paid? What are they hiding? That's right. Like, why can't you have, you know, gotten together with a Disney star? Kelty. Why not? And just got all the tea? Yeah. I know. I missed the ball. I missed the ball. I'm trying to think of any opportunity I had. Like if I didn't meet Michael so young, dang it, I would have tried. I would have tried. Could have had a Jonas Brothers. I just Brothers. want the tea. <laughs> oh. Actually, they... Who didn't so think like, they were going to marry the Jonas Brothers? I, I was convinced. I was like, Same. definitely. There's a one in three chance. <laughs> like, Literally. In my mind, I really I delusionally thought. Yeah. Nick Jonas was going to be my husband one way or the other. A hundred percent. And I was like, worst comes worst. No one likes Kevin, so I'll settle. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll settle? He literally looks like the best one, though. Honestly, like, he, he seems like he's winning. He is like, that's such a good analogy because he seems like that's who actually, he's he's a dad. They were boys. He's a dad. Kevin's a dad. Literally. Also, like his story, his love story with his wife made you delusional because he like met her on a cruise ship or something, like some vacation. And she didn't know who the Jonas Brothers were. Like, obviously, come on, we all know you were lying. I do it too. It's fine. Yeah, I would also lie. But like, yeah, we're all like, oh, honey, we all know. It's like um, Mastermind by Taylor Swift. You're a mastermind. True. true. Let's be real. We all are. We all are. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, next next uh, subject. Did you see Lizzo? This was just in the news. Lizzo is quitting. She yes. announced on her Instagram. What do you think? Are you a big Lizzo fan? See, I I won't lie. Lizzo's has some bops. You know what I mean? And I've definitely danced around to them. But like, I was never 
a diehard Lizzo fan in the sense like I wouldn't pay to see her, but like it's also just not my genre of music. Like like I said, I like three AM womp womp. <laughs> Lizzo isn't giving me drum and bass. <laughs> but uh and then everything that came out with that dancers and everything like that that just gave me kind of like the it's it's hard to enjoy someone's like happy music when you're like, oh people dancing to this were not having a good time. So and then I didn't hear anything really come, like anyone really come to her defense. Like I always feel I'm like, I'm never one to judge a headline. I'm like, let's give it time. People people will come and no one really came. I'm like, ooh, ooh. But I, I still don't know, still haven't met her. But I haven't actually seen this. I just saw your writing. Did she give any reference? Like, was it the fame? Was it the exhaustion? Or was this one of those like accepting her semi-cancellation? Like what was... Reason? It was like a written as if she was a 40 year old grandma. Well, for wow. that'd be a very young grandma. Um, a 40 year old trying to work Facebook. It was like, you know, when you can type wow. and it's like a little weird rainbow yeah. behind it, like, or color, yeah. and you're just wanting to type something and save it. And she yeah. essentially just said, like, I'm so sick of you guys all coming after me. All I want to do is make music, make people happy. So, like, I'm mm-hmm. done. I quit. But then, like, literally the next post is her, like, promoting something else. So it was, like, alluding to her quitting maybe music. But, like, I think she's still – I think a lot of those, you know, uh, celebrities own certain brands. Um, let me see if I can pull it up so I don't misquote. But, um, yeah, I kind of think, like, man, if you're going to dish it out, you got to take it. Yeah, that's like part of it, as crappy as that is, especially if like you're not treating everyone well. And once again, I don't know. I don't know for sure. I was never there. I was never one of the dancers. But it also, why as an artist would you ever quit? That kind of confuses me in the sense of like, I just think of like even YouTubers quitting. You might be like, hey guys, I'm taking a little break or just take the break. Do you know what I mean? Like, why would yeah. you ever? Because what happens if you take a break and you want to come back to it? So I, yeah. So maybe she says she's just quitting like in... Do you know what I mean? Like the fame of it all. So maybe that was what she was hoping that she's like, I'm not going to do interviews. I'm not going to interact. She just wants to make music, which is the dream. But with nowadays to be a performer, you have to be on the Instagram game and you have to be connecting mm-hmm. with fans. And I think that's the best part. You get to connect with fans. So you know what I mean? I think it's, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't be famous and anonymous at the same time. Like it. Yeah. You can't do it. So can't she own owns, it. she's CEO of a company called Yiddy. And it's shapewear. And um, so she, I'll read what she said. I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. All I want is to make music, make people happy, and help the world be a little better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views, being the butt of every single joke because of how I look, my character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespected my name. I didn't sign up for this shit. I quit. So she said that. And then literally like today she posted about the Yiddy company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe she's, yeah, maybe she's taking like a personal brand break, which Mm -hmm. honestly I would probably like, I don't know. I feel like I would, I would do what Taylor Swift did and I would just go ghost mode. 100%. 100%. I'd be Nobody's saying Nobody's so heard or seen like, from me for months. But she was probably like I'm angry. So, you know what I mean? So, she was like, I, need yeah. to say, I can't I can't give them the satisfaction that they left. She, like, she's like, I'm choosing to leave. So, I'm sure it was one of those. And like, I, I do feel for her because I think we're both on like, I'm on the very positive side of the internet. So, then in my mind, like, I don't see Lizzo hate. I just saw the one thing with her backup dancers. And aside from that, like, I don't see it. But like, I, you got to think of meme dark sides of Twitter. Like I can just imagine how exhausting that is. And so she like, she, the irony is you're probably fed your hate the most on like apps like TikTok. Cause like, how'd you, mm-hmm. oh, so that's gotta be exhausting. Um, so yeah, I bet you that's why it wouldn't be me. I would just be like, okay, I'm gone. Bye. Yeah. I would service. literally ghost mode, mm-hmm. write a reputation album, but like I do. Yeah. I think, I don't know. Celebrities are so tough. Cause they do endure so much. Like uh, it would make, it would make anybody nutty because you really don't know them. Like we don't actually know her. No. Right. It's like actors. Know. You don't know a thing about who they really are. Or even like, totally. um, I listened to Caller Daddy's Britney Snow episode. 
oh my yeah. God, it was so fascinating. Cause like, mm. I loved her growing up. Mm-hmm. She's like this famous actress in Hairspray. She even, I loved Prom when I was growing up, the movie she was in, that was like yeah. a horror film. And she like had that infidelity issue with her, her husband basically like openly, mm-hmm. it was alluding that he was cheating on her on his TV show. He was on a reality TV show called Selling OC. So it's like a spin off of Selling Sunsets. Yeah. And she like said, like, I found out with everybody else. Like I found out watching the show. Like I didn't know. And crazy. But you just she was just kind of describing who she was. And I was like, oh my God, we really don't know this girl. Like, that's crazy that they get so like this misinterpretation. It's like the Megan Fox episode. Someone yes. builds up her personality, builds up who they think they she is, and then they kill it. Yeah. And then she's yeah. like, I don't know who you want me to be. It's that's a crazy one of just like seeing like you no longer have control out of, over like your own perspective. And like, I get like the Lizzo's like you, I mean, you want to take like back ownership of it. And like, how'd you do that? Like you can do the Megan Fox and disappear and come back. And I guess that's the blessing of podcasts actually. Like, I feel like what Megan Fox did, like, I was like, I kind of feel like I know Megan Fox a little, like I gave some yeah. perspective of like, even I found it so funny her talking about the demonic stuff and like her self-awareness. Yeah. So she's like, that was kind of her one thing. It's like the biggest misconception. She's like, that she's this big devil worshiper. And she explained why, but she's like, I won't lie. I post that thing and I'm feeding the beast a little. So I was like, you know what? I love hearing that celebrities at least understand where the rumors come from. Yeah. They're not like in this. Sometimes I think we think they're locked away in a castle and that they don't hear it. Yeah. And it's like, they totally do. <laughs> and yeah. it definitely eats at them just like we think it does. Just like you say one thing and that's probably happened to them so many times you say one thing and suddenly it's like blown out of proportion and you're like, why did I do that? Why did I feed the beast? But so give them props, give them props. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Next up with that being said on cancellations, what are your thoughts on the article of uh, your boy, Andrew Huberman? So I'm trying to read this whole thing. That is, first of all, that is a long article. That is a long article. I gave up. Like, I, I gave we up all did. We all did. I was like, oh, but I got it. And I was like, I'm going to give this time before I even say everything. Cause I was like, it's one-sided people, even back to what we're saying with like the Lizzo. I was like, who's going to come to the defense? Who's going to, you know what I mean? It's kind of like the opening. If he is this a thousand things, then a thousand people are going to come out on the flip side are people going to come defend. Um, so it, he, I won't lie. I have the ick. I got to say it. It doesn't take away everything I learned from him. I've learned a lot of things and I think that's great, but that was so invasive. I I don't want to know that about somebody. I was like, why is this personal life? Like I had, he like come out that he was a Stanford, not a Stanford professor, or it was actual crimes. I'd be like, okay, cancel. But I'm just confused. Like I got the heebie jeebies. I'm like, it's, I feel like I found out my professor is having an affair. I'm like, oh, I don't want it. I don't, I don't know my professor is sleeping with people. I don't want to know that. <laughs> That's how I feel. Yeah. Right you want to think, you want to think he clocks in yeah. and it's like, um, there's a saying for it. Those people that like, it, it's like an actor almost where like they clock in, they do their job, the job yeah. you know them for, and they can't get out mm-hmm. of the box. And if you yeah. do, you're like, Whoa, wait, what? Yeah. That's not right. But I do have to say one thing. I think we all have to be a bit honest with ourselves. You're telling me this 45-year-old, jacked, attractive, smart, Stanford professor, rich man was not married and not a woman. I, like, it, I was like, upon reflection, I'm like, yeah, how wasn't he married? There was, there, you know what I mean? The red flag was glaring. <laughs> I'm like, I always thought that. I was kind of like, I'm shocked he doesn't have kids and married. He seems like a good catch. And they're, they're the Answer like, right there. Boom. It was in our faces the entire time. And we all chose to ignore it. We chose to ignore that major red flag. I'm not going to lie. He does have like this godlike complex too. Mm-hmm. So it probably doesn't help that it fed the beast. And like, I think, you know, like he got super famous. He is very good looking and like mm-hmm. super smart. So yeah, the man's going to, I mean, is it moral, morally correct? That's for everyone's debate, right? Like we yeah. think you, um, mm-hmm. but it's like, I just feel like that article was like none of my business. It's like, I just, I want ignorance is bliss because I don't plan on dating this man. I just want to hear yeah. his podcast. So it's yeah. almost like a stay in your lane, go back into your bubble. 
but do you think he will ever address this? I don't think he will. I think, cause I was, I was, that, I, I'm fascinated. Like he said nothing as of now. And, but I was like, okay, he's coming out. Who's he talking to? And I just think of all of his little podcast friends that have been canceled a thousand times. I bet you they all just said, just ignore it. Keep going. And I was like, I bet you that's exactly Do what you he think did. he could sue for defamation? No, because like, ah, really? I feel like he I, could I guess hypothetically, but, but then the, that would be but, like, he'd have to prove it's wrong in a sense. Yeah, right. True. And it's like kind of one of those things, is it worth the effort and versus like, just like, I feel, I hate to say it. It's this also unpopular opinion, and I'm not saying it's good. I think this is just like work the exact opposite the writer wants to do. Cause I don't know if you went on Twitter the next day after this happened, the memes. Oh my, I, I hate to say some of them were hilarious. And cause like everyone now is saying like, do you know what I mean? It was very like, how, how do I say this correctly? It was trying to like bring him down from his pedestal, but I think he just put him on a pedestal of like crappy manosphere guys. Do you know what I mean? Cause now suddenly they're uh -huh. all like, you're telling like me he's jacked rich and now can handle six girlfriends. Like, do you know what I mean? So yeah. like now it's almost like all these shitty guys like him even more. Cause he can, so I'm like, ah, unfortunately I think he got an ick for quite a few people, but I hate to say it. I think everyone's going to forget. And this is one of those cancellations that might actually unfortunately help. You know, I could be yeah. wrong. I could be wrong. More could come out and he's even worse. I don't know. We're in the thick of it. How it's kind of like, if you think about it, like if he does help people with that podcast, which I've taken his tips and it's really helped me. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of like you're going to your doctor for something and like you want your doctor to fix whatever it is. And like, he may be having something on the side that you don't know. Right. Cause he's yeah. a human. He's after hours. I don't want to know. Just fix what I need fixed. It's none of my goddamn business what you're doing. I was like, well, <laughs> it's all good. I, can oh, hear I got my head. All, all good. Uh, my tiny little ears. But like, I just think of that where I'm like, I would, I just think like at the end of the day, it wouldn't matter for me mm -hmm. with my doctor, as long as they did it properly, what I needed. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, I don't want to know, but I do think it's so gross. And like, please, if you're a lady, don't date this man. Yeah, <laughs> like, that, that's my biggest takeaway. I was like, no longer daddy Huberman. I don't want anyone dating him. Or if that just no, he's a major red flag and it sounds exhausting, but you know what? It also reminded me of the doctor of analogy what? is like it, a dentist. If you go to a dentist and has bad teeth, but they're the best dentist and they're giving you the best facts. And if you follow what they say, you're going to have great dental hygiene, but then you're also like, why aren't you listening to your own advice? Like it, it kind of is one of those moments in a sense like he's painted as this god figure and like we're gonna do all this but like he's also but then people are also human like everyone's got a red flag and so i was like it's one of those like would you go to a dentist that tells you everything right but they have rotten teeth would you still take their advice like it's kind of one of those Ooh. but some but some dentists are so like i i had a dentist growing up and he was the absolute best dentist and he lived off coke like pop not drugs eh, maybe actually maybe <laughs> Upon reflection, Maybe probably, both. but he like, he was so devoted to being a dentist and helping kids that like, he didn't give a shit about his health. And so it was kind of like one of those, like, you know what I mean? And I think there, I don't have an answer to it. I think it's just one of those like weird moral questions you got to ask yourself. Like, can you take advice from someone that knows what to say, but isn't following it themselves? Yeah. It's like nurses that smoke, doctors that smoke. You're like, whoa, yeah, it's so exactly. trippy. It's weird, but it happens all also, the time. Also with this type of situation, people tend to just like normalize it, move on. Think mm -hmm. of like Leo DiCaprio. That yes. man's a freaking freak. Like he, <clears throat> he loves little girls. Like he loves the, the 18, right? And like, it's a joke now. And yeah. like they, he's still like, it doesn't affect his career really yeah. to an extent. Johnny Depp, that whole situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it kind of damaged it a little bit, but like yeah. it was so clear that he, like he had issues with this. And like I watched that whole documentary and I was like, ooh, sir, you are so guilty. Mm -hmm. But like it, it's just crazy because it gets ignored. Even think of like, why did we normalize Hugh Hefner being this old man with yes. like 20 women? 
that was so gross. And like, yeah. why was that just normal? Like, why yeah. were we like, oh, he, half being half in like a People's Magazine article? And you're like, ew, yeah. like what? You what? I've also learned the older I get, the more someone is succeeding in one way in life, just know something else is missing. Like there is like, do you know what I mean? Like all those billionaires, all them, like you find out, I think the best quote was like actually Elon Musk on SNL. He's, uh, he says something like, so I run the biggest company. I'm the richest man on earth r- running five companies. And you expected me to be normal. I'm like, yeah, true. Like, you know what I mean? The fact that we expect someone to be rich, successful, smart, this, I'm like, no, no, no. If you're like pouring way too much for one cup, something's missing. So I think it's just like one of those reminders yeah. of like back to the Nickelodeon things, like, it's not as pretty as we've seen. We see these successful, amazing guys. They have a red flag we haven't seen. And I'm just, I'm convinced Absolutely. of that with everyone. And like the best people are just like my best friends who have a regular job. Good, you know, just balanced. They're not overly successful in anything, but they're not lacking in anything. Just balanced. As soon as you get into that wow. top one, 1%, there's a demon, a demon coming out. And that's me judging. What but a life motto. I <laughs> truly stay think- average. If you're a billionaire, too smart, too good looking, you got demons in that closet. I'm convinced. No, I'm convinced as well. Mm-hmm. I've met some people that are like, you're like, mm, you are weird, sir or ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Even like, I'm sure you feel it. The months that my work is going really well, it dawns on me. I'm like, I didn't call my mom this week. I suck. Do you know what I mean? Like, I even feel like nowadays you just, you just can't, you can't have it all. Either you have a little bit of everything or you miss out on some things. And yeah, or you just have that crazy fluctuation. True. Of like, if it doesn't go that way, you're like, the world is ending. Yeah. And you're like, that's not a normal viewpoint either. No. Normal things not. don't happen that way. Nope. Yeah. But in our minds. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now we'd be now crazy. Think, yeah. Now I just have the ick. I'm sorry, I got the ick. It's going to be hard for me to listen All right. To you heard it in. first. Kelsey has the ick. I still, I'm still so going to look at morning sunshine. I'm still going to have morning sunshine, but I'm going to like. I still steps. do my hour later coffee. Yeah. We have, we have to acknowledge that, but I won't lie. His podcast came on my feed this week and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't really want to press it right now. <laughs> I, I, no, no, I got no. the heebie jeebies. <laughs> I truly cannot. Yeah. The uh, whole thing. I can't think about it. I can't think about it too much. I get so icked out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, on on to, with the ex, the X. Next article found this mm-hmm. on Apple. Thought it was interesting. Went to see if it was real. Went on TikTok. It is. Mm-hmm. There's this thing. Is it oat zempic? Mm-hmm. A substitute for ozempic. Mm-hmm. So there's just like this claim. Like this lady basically went viral claiming that if you mixed oats, <laughs> lime, water. And sprinkle a cinnamon and blend it as a meal replacement drink. It'll help you lose weight. And like, it is one, why the lime? But like, guys, come on. And I, like, the, there's an article on Apple just debunking it, yeah. obviously being like, Fully. okay, hello, Ozempic is a drug. This is just watery oats yeah. that you're drinking and you're probably just not eating th- throughout Fully. the day. Right. Well, it, it will work because that's absolutely revolting. So you're not going to drink it. So you have nothing to drink. So you'll lose weight. You know what I mean? Like you've like, <laughs> it's kind of like all you get to eat is rotten tomatoes. Well, I'm not going to eat the rotten tomatoes. So I'm not eating. I'm going to lose weight. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. my analogy with it. But that, I thought we were past this. Sometimes I'm like, we're past the lemon water, honey, maple syrup, cayenne pepper drink of the early 2000 diets. And I thought we were smarter than so this TikTok. I'm disappointed. Like, it's like the the Pinterest banana diet. 100%. Like, it, yeah, it just made me giggle. The name is so clever. Honestly, oat Zempic. I feel that's the only reason it took off. Like had it just been like totally. oat lime cinnamon, wouldn't have gone anywhere, but genius marketing. That girl, get her working with McDonald's. Genius marketing. Absolutely. Shitty product. Genius I completely marketing. agree. Yeah. So do your own research, but you guys know it is not the same as Ozempic. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yep. And uh, they were essentially just saying that this was like an easier way to get the same results without spending all the money. And I'm like, no, that's not. That's like claiming to shoot water in your forehead and saying that's Botox. Yeah. It is not the same. 
No, it's not. And just, just a little reminder, you want to lose the right weight if you want to lose weight, not muscle. And there's no protein in that. Like, go have a protein shake, my God. <laughs> like, There's a thousand other things you can do to lose weight that are better, more sustainable. Like, and that How about just do your own research? True. How about just get educated? You are an adult. Sometimes I will get these messages and I'm like, you are an adult. You can Google things. Like, yeah. you will never accomplish it if you're wanting someone to hold your hand the whole time. No. Or just, you know what? Just rule of thumb. If it just suddenly randomly blew up on TikTok and it seems too good to be true, it's too good to be true. You need to go back on good old Google and start doing peer-reviewed studies and just reading some hard, good articles, not just whatever you're for you is putting in front of your face because that just never, never turns out well. No, absolutely. All right, well, we'll end it here with, because it's April Fool's for us. Mm -hmm. So we filmed on a Monday. Yeah. What is your best April Fool's joke that you did growing up? I called my mom at like 8 a.m., 7 a.m., several years ago, in like my early 20s. And I was like, Mom, and it was like Saturday morning. I'm like, uh, are, are you alone right now? She's like, yeah, what's going on? I was like, um, I don't know how to um, – uh, when you were pregnant with me, like what were your symptoms? She's like, Kelt? I'm like, just like – I, I don't want to alarm you. Just like, were you nauseous? Like, I haven't had my period in like four months. Like, and she's like, oh, and she's like, oh my god. And then like, and she like start pat and she's like, oh this and this and then you know she wanted to be a mom. And I was like, April Fools. She screamed and hung up on me. And my mother has never been so mad, never because in her mind she started processing like, how do we deal with this? Who got her pregnant? <laughs> and yeah, so that was the meanest, but the most executed. April Fool's ever done. I, the conversation was like 10 minutes. I had her going on for like 10 minutes. And then- That's horrible. She, she was very bad. <laughs> I would be mad too. That's an yep. awful joke. Yeah. So I've, I haven't pranked her since. It's been like eight Fair. years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. How, that's a good one. How about you? I honestly, I just was like a little menace. I don't think I did anything crazy. I, you know, I used to saran wrap, you know, the classic like toilet- You'd yeah. saran wrap uh, underneath yeah. and then it would spray out everywhere. And I'm pretty yeah. positive I got Michael one time on that. Yeah. Um, or my favorite was I'd go to school and my friends and I would like take out the frosting of the Oreos and put Colgate uh, toothpaste. Well, I was just like the annoying kid. Yeah. I never did anything elaborate because I'm really bad at lying. Mm -hmm. um, but I love I love a good April Fool's joke. I can't – nothing's coming to me. But I just know during that time – you can't be fooled. Never take anything serious on April no. Fools. Okay, here's my question though, because I feel we're all slightly get caught by the first thing on Instagram because we don't realize it's the first. So the first company to do something, you're kind of like, oh, and then you instantly like, oh, it's April Fools. Like we're all too smart now. But what what was the one that you were like weird? Of like, was there one right when you opened Instagram that almost got you for a split second? Like the first one? Do you remember this morning? No, I don't think I, I haven't really been on my phone today. Ah. I've been running around like a mad woman. Nice. So nice. I know I started picking up some girls like in person to train. Mm -hmm. um, I just felt like a little lonely with constantly being on my phone and my laptop. Yeah. And I had some girls being like, hey, do you train in person? And I was like, you know what? Let's give it a go. Let's give I it a go. I love it. love but that for you. Mondays are busy. So mm -hmm. did you get, have you had one? So it was like, I woke up at 5 a.m. not having slept for like three days. So no idea what time, day, universe. I'm in a different world. I opened it up and Tim Hortons was selling poutine donuts. I was like, odd choice. Sounds kind of the worst. So I was like, I'm so hungover. I was like, that sounds great. <laughs> and I just kept scrolling. And in my mind, I was like thinking how that would work. I'm like, because there's so many limited edition donuts in that now. I'm like, yeah, Tim Hortons poutine, most Canadian thing ever. It makes sense. And, I'm and then like two seconds later, I'm like, oh, fuck. I fell for that. <laughs> Oh my god, I love that poutine. Just That's disgusting. It sounds awful, but I'm so drunk. The thought of like a donut and poutine, I'm like, I'm not drunk, hungover. I was like, yeah, yes, that's what I want right Let's now. Go. I was like, sign me up. I'm going. I was genuinely like, you want? I think we're gonna get that today. I love I that. You pull up. It. It's yeah. just you. You're like just poutine me. donut, please for one. They're like, Shh, are you well, ma'am? Are you okay? I'm like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I need God. I bet they would have like recorded that for their like 100% social media. Be like, 
drunk girl shows up Monday, 8 a.m. asking for poutine donuts. Today. Absolutely. I, I, I don't think she's well. I think we should yeah. you have put that on TikTok. Great publicity. Yeah. Great publicity. For it's you. Supporters. You're like sunglasses inside. You're like, Kelsey <laughs> O'Connor, YouTuber. You're like, no, I just wanted a donut. No, don't. Paparazzi, no. <laughs> Just yeah, not the Canadian paparazzi. <laughs> yeah, because they hang out at downtown Vancouver Tim Hortons. If if you've ever been to downtown Vancouver Tim Hortons, you know there. No one would judge me for being hungover at it. We'll put it that way. There would not be Ooh. a single judgment. Single judgment. It's <laughs> you never know what you're going to get in there. Okay, yeah, I have really never cool. had Tim Hortons. Fun fact. Wow, it's so overrated <laughs> in the sense like oh. it's it's one of those things. This is how we describe it. Like I guess we call it craft dinner. You call it mac and cheese, you know, the blue box. Like you just make Yeah, love yeah. So, craft mac, mac and cheese. But, but you know if theoretically you were to have it the, for the first time in your life now, you'd be like this sucks. But the fact we had as a kid growing up, there's like yeah. that nostalgic factor. That's Tim Horton. So for me, like a chocolate glaze, sour cream glaze donut, just the turkey baking club. Like unbelievable delicacy. But had I tried it for the first time in my twenties, I'd be like, this how is this place functioning? Like it's just like so <laughs> it's like six AM, you're going on a road trip with your family. But I will say the bites are better than Duncan. You know, the little donut holes, they're called Timbits. Way better. Way better. That's all we have. Ooh, yeah. okay. I'll so, have to I'll have to give it a go. Give it next a Next time we meet up, I'll smuggle some in for you. Yeah. Yeah. Work. Donuts, donuts. Net, Tim bits, Tim bits. Oh, <laughs> it's me in the club. Donuts. Tim bit. No, they're called yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tim bits. Tim bits. Great name that. though. Great name, right? Tim bit. It's it's so cute. Yeah, absolutely. You know what's funny? I'll end on this confession session of mine. Please do. Um, I like made us all breakfast or like lunch, and then I went, and I was just like, I always multitask. I'll have a headphone in, and I mm -hmm. love to listen to Gilmore Girls naturally, and. I'm eating over the sink because I don't want crumbs. I had baked cookies yesterday while watching Gilmore Girls. Yeah. And so I have it propped up. I'm just dunking my milk and cookies. And uh, our visitor like comes out, Mike, and he's like, hey, I thought you were on a call. I was like, no, eating cookies in the morning, yeah. watching Gilmore Girls on a Monday. I and he's like, oh, and I'm like, yeah. And then I was like, you want a cookie? He's like, yeah. And then Perfect. I hear like Michael come out of his office 10 minutes later, grab some cookies. I'm like, we're all little cookie monsters over oh, here. Oh, yeah. It's Easter Monday. You should be. That should be everyone go have a cookie for breakfast. Yeah. 100%. Or just because it's Absolutely. Wednesday. Absolutely. Whenever. Except you mean Thursday? He's come out on Thursday. Sure. I just said around a day, but that would have made sense. I just, someone's oh. listening. Some, right now, you're listening and it's a Wednesday. Someone. Yeah, that's one true. One person there. Go get Becky. yourself a cookie. Please do. Becky. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, everybody, thank you for listening, hanging out with us. We hope you have a lovely week. Don't forget to leave us a review. If you want to write it, we will read it. Uh, please be nice. Check out, we have a YouTube channel if you want to watch our faces talk. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.